and welcome to this edition of FYI. I'm Elaine Chang-Baxter, the Director of Partnerships for Montgomery County Public Schools. With us in the studio today is Sylvia Romero. Sylvia is a Parent Community Coordinator in the Division of Student, Family, and School Services. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. What is a Parent Community Coordinator? And a lot of people think of uh, Parent Community Coordinators as PCCs. What is that? So we help parents to navigate the school system, parents and families, and so we want to make sure that they're connected properly to the services within the school, within the county, resources that are also available in the school, in the community, and to make sure that they also have a welcoming experience in the school building to be sure that they understand how they can support their child's learning um, and the different things that they can do at home to support as well. So can you describe what some of that support looks like? Uh, do you guys welcome them in the beginning of the school year? Do you have a, a, a list that the school refers families? Yeah, so to certainly you? each one of us, our school communities are very different, and mm -hmm. so we just adapt to uh, the, the community and our school and the families. And so we do, because welcome, having a welcoming environment is so important in the school mm -hmm. building. So that's something that's very important to us, whether we're connecting with new families uh, that are new to the school, or there are families that may need some more support as far as academics, or they need support at home. Uh, uh, they may have just arrived to the country, they may have just arrived to the county, to Maryland, um, or they just have questions on how they can connect with their child's teacher. Um, they don't quite understand the homework or their child was absent and they don't know the policies of what to do when their child is absent, um, questions to ask if there, there's something going on at home that we can support them with, whether it's in the school building or connecting them with community resources like eyeglasses or they need some more food uh, to support the family at home. Uh, family was just uh, displaced, uh, there are changes in the family, um, we could help them with furniture, we could help them to connect with other things because if all the things that are going on outside of the school, the children are bringing that, sure. um, it makes a big impact on them in the classroom. Right. So we want to make sure that they're in school and ready to learn. Mm -hmm. So if that means that we can support the family mm -hmm. with things outside of the academics and outside of the school, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's very important to do that. So we're happy to help support in that as well. Mm -hmm. How do schools go about letting parents know that you guys actually exist? So each school will do that differently, mm -hmm. but you know we really try to be present in the school building. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's events that are happening in the morning, you know there's parent coffees or PTA has events. Mm -hmm. It could be um, evening events that are happening. Um, for example, now with parent teacher conferences mm -hmm. that are that are coming up, mm -hmm. and so we like to be there to help support whether it's language for those of us that speak multiple languages, mm -hmm. or if it's just to help parents answer questions, getting to know them mm -hmm. at back to school events. Um, and also for different things that we may have going on in school, uh, making calls uh, to families, letting them know of certain things. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different ways that we connect with families, mm -hmm. but certainly if they want to check with their school to see if one of us does service their school. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason there isn't a parent community coordinator at the school, mm -hmm. then uh, they can always contact our office in the Division of Student and Family School Services mm -hmm. to make a referral. There's a referral form online. Okay. So and I was going to ask ask you, um, not all schools have a PCC? Correct. Okay. Correct. And so we are assigned to schools that are mostly, um, that are the schools that are mostly impacted. Mm -hmm. And all, which would be the elementary schools is the, where we are mostly at. Uh -huh. However, some of us are at the secondary schools at middle okay. and high school. And that's only if the school is a MET site. Um, and METS is a the subpopulation of ESOL students sure. who when they arrive from their country they have um, a break in interruption or they didn't have formal education so we're at those schools as well. I see but you just said that even if my school didn't have a PCC I could go to a website or someone from the school could help go to the website on my behalf uh, say that I have right. a need uh, that'll go to that office and that office will help support me Correct. regardless of whether or not my school has a PCC. Correct. They okay. will they will um, assign a PCC to help support okay. the family. I think that's important for the community Absolutely. to know. I didn't know yes. that. Yes. Um, and then you were saying earlier that there are 10 month and 12 month PCCs. Can you talk about that? Yes. And then are the 12 months spread thin during the summer if there are some that, you know? Yes. So the 10 month PCCs are typically in the Title I schools and they're mm -hmm. funded by uh, that program mm -hmm. in the schools. Mm -hmm. And then we are 12 month PCCs and we work out of um, Central 
central office, out of the administrative offices. And so in the summertime, we do support a lot um, with the extended learning opportunity, which is the summer program. We support at the ESOL um, summer programs. But in addition, we do a lot. There's still a lot of cases, a lot of families that still need support throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and so each one of us will kind of work with our school communities mm -hmm. and with our principals to figure out which would be the best way to really outreach to a lot of the families to connect with families in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly the the work is still there and sure. the number of families that need support in the summer is, is great sure. still. So do you find that the families that aren't necessarily participating in summer school are still accessing the PCCs during the summer or is it more so the ones that have kids participating in summer programs? Really, um, because most of us have made connections with families during the sure. school year, it's a continuation mm -hmm. throughout the year mm -hmm. or families that will come into the, they'll call the school office mm -hmm. or something that happens and so we'll make connections that way. Mm -hmm. But even so, the families that are attending summer school, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's transportation issues or um, absences or there's still questions on um, what, what the teacher is going over, materials, we do a lot with the volunteers as well, mm -hmm. training the volunteers for the summer programs. Um, and so certainly the, the families could reach out to the schools and if we're at already in the school building, we always mm -hmm. are you know, making our families aware of how to continue contact with us in the summer because we're still in Good. the school building. Good. And, and that trust and that relationship that you guys have built with, built with families, I'm sure, is very um, much appreciated. Absolutely. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that as parent community coordinators, mm -hmm. we all feel so strongly mm -hmm. about how, you know, no matter the situation, the question that the family has, mm -hmm. we want to help them mm -hmm. to feel a mm -hmm. sort of resolution to the problem or connect sure. them to the right place. Sure. Um, because it, it's it's very challenging. Right. There, there are lots of things going on at home. There's lots right. of things going on in the school building, and right. it's a lot to balance. Right. So we're that person, that connection, and that liaison that can help them, whether it's in the school building or it's out in the community, to get them the answers to Great. their questions. Great. Do you find that some of your parents um, refer other parents to you? Like, if I have Absolutely. the relationship with you, then I know that you're kind of a safe and trusted person, so I might refer my new neighbor that just moved yes, in. Yes, yes, absolutely. And as we, you know, the family as well, um, mm -hmm. they have older students or they may go to another school for a special mm -hmm. program or something like that. And just because that's not our assigned school sure. doesn't mean, you know, it's a continuation with the family sure. of continuing to support and helping uh -huh. them through all of those things. Right. But it, it is definitely a lot too. You know, it's great to hear other families that feel mm -hmm. that we've welcomed them and they feel that connection that we've made with them and that they do, um, you know, refer their other friends and their families to make that connection with us to help them as well because that's what we're here for is to help right. them connect and helping them feel welcome in school. Good. Um, what does a typical day look like for a parent community coordinator? Well, again, it, it's so different. Our school communities are so different, but it could be, you know, we haven't even arrived to the school building and we're getting text messages or phone oh, okay. calls from parents that my child is absent today or um, there's a school refusal, the child doesn't want to go to school, mm -hmm. or they had a family crisis in their home the night before, mm -hmm. or I forgot to turn in the field trip um, for them and they're going today, what can I do? Or I forgot wow. to pack a lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from things that we may assume would be very simple, for them they still are, aren't sure um, of certain school processes mm -hmm. and that's another thing that we do too, um, especially with new families mm -hmm. is making sure that they understand those things, mm -hmm. arrival times, departure times, mm -hmm. lunches and how to do that, mm -hmm. um, how to reach out to the counselor, that it's okay to, you know, talk to the principal, talk to the assistant principal. We want families to be involved mm -hmm. and that can mean anything that can mean just having a conversation with your mm -hmm. child at home about how your day went, how, who your friends are, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are your favorite classes, mm -hmm. where did you have challenges to coming into the school building. Mm -hmm. And you know, we also try to help so that those barriers that do exist, like language, mm -hmm. transportation, or um, maybe an experience mm -hmm. a family had when they were in school, mm -hmm. uh, helping families to break those barriers. Right. And it's really just, you know, one connection at a time, yeah. building those relationships with families because yeah. we do want them to, we want to help them to feel empowered right. so that they can be their child's best advocate. Right. Um, when families text with you, are they texting in what language, a different language or in English? 
So that's a, um, a good question. So for those of us, yes, that are uh, that speak other languages, right. we'll um, we will communicate with families in that language. Uh -huh. But um, you know, with technology nowadays, right. if if we already know a family that speaks a, a different language, I know some of us. I can't speak for everybody, but you know, we'll use. Um, you know, Google Translate or, sure. or different ways so that we can, without having to always rely on a language line interpreter, right. we can just do that through wow. text messages. And sometimes, you know, parents with their work schedules, sure. they can't always call us at a time Correct. that's convenient. So that's we can helpful. at least um, message back and forth through text messages or email and certainly try to do that in their language. Good. Okay. Well, tell us again, how do we, how do parents uh, or members of the community access a parent community coordinator if they're not sure if they have one at their mm -hmm. school? or listening to the show, mm -hmm. you know, they definitely want to access. How, would they, how do they go about doing that? So they can check with their school, um, check with the principal, check with the secretaries uh -huh. to see if we are in that school, uh -huh. or otherwise they can call our office, uh -huh. um, Division of uh, Student Family School Services, we're <laughs> often changing our names, um, but they can reach out to our office as well to um, inquire more about it, and then they can also find that referral form on our website. Thank you so much for being yeah, on the show. This you. was so informative and you do such important work for our school system. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. I'm Elaine Chang-Baxter, the Director of Partnerships. Join us next time on FYI.